dirty and you need to have them wash. Wisdom and humility is a virtue. Yeah. All these things come out of the word that gives you power. I want yeah. to know that he can solve them. Hallelujah. If I never went through a trial, how can you escape? If you neglect spending time with God. Yeah. Right. If you thank God, hallelujah, for the spirit of truth. A little echo. But welcome to the Henderson Church God of Prophecy, where you have a right to be free and you don't have to take what the devil has to offer. God is for you, not against you. Amen. You have a right to be free. That's the gospel truth. I mean, we thank God for the Jesus Faith Deliverance Church. We thank God for all of our supporters and thank you for all your prayers. Amen. Encouragement. Wonderful, encouraging words. But we can go on and on, but your time is very, very valuable. So we're going to go straight to the word of God for the people of God. Our foundation scriptures come out of the book of Ephesians, yes. the fifth chapter, starting with verse 14 through 20. And it reads, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine or in access, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that we can focus our attention on verse 17, it says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Hallelujah. We're going to be preaching today and teaching. Amen. And our lesson today is God's will. Hallelujah. We're talking about God's will. And it's such a powerful, powerful thing because, amen, God is, 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 is all powerful. And whenever he decides to do something, he will do it. So we have God's will and the will of God and also we have the permissive will of God. God permitting things to happen, although it may not be what he desires, his full will. But the, the truth of the matter is that God has a will, but in creating man, he's given us a will also. And God's not going to override your will without prayer from somebody else. We can pray for those who won't listen and we can believe God, but God wants our input in it and Oh yeah, God will move even though you may not want to move, but somebody somewhere has got to be praying and intercessing and, and someone has to plant and someone has to water and God will bring, bring the increase. As bad as you want your family member to change, God desires for them to change even more. As bad as you want someone to get saved, God wants them to be saved and love them even more. Yeah. But he put things in place and he put structure in place Amen. For us to grab a hold of God's will. That's Amen. Right. It says here, it says, Wherefore he says, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. When you think about the word life, amen, it's an understanding. Yeah. Christ will give you understanding. Amen. When you come unto Christ, you'll understand more about the things of the world and more about the things of the things of God than you never understood. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody's struggling with the Bible. I heard a man say the other day, that old Bible, you can't understand that thing because they're in darkness. It, right. It's not until Christ shines the light on your heart and mind till you get the right perspective and you can see everything that's supposed to happen. I remember the other day, there was a man who had some pictures and he said, do you see the eagle? And I couldn't see no eagle. All I could see was some hands and stuff. And he said, keep on looking. And I kind of looked to the side and said, wow, I can see the evil now. It was there all the time in my face. And, but I couldn't see it until I looked the right way. I'm telling you that there's a blessing right in front of you. Yes. There's the things of God right in front of you. And you may be blind to it. You don't understand them and see it. But oh, once you ask Christ into your life, once you get serious and mean business with God, he'll, he'll, the, the light will shine. That's right. Christ will give you light. Yeah. Hallelujah. But once you get the light, you got to get in verse 15 and say, see then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. That word means you got to start walking carefully. Yeah. Once you get in the light and understand right from wrong, once you get in the light and understand things are dangerous, you got to walk circumspectively. It's danger and addictions. 
is danger right now. Recreational sex can cause you to get a, a, a disease that'll take your life out. A sexual transmitted disease is dangerous. Oh yeah. yes, walking in darkness, calling yourself a thief, it's dangerous to steal. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you want to be a gangster, want to shoot, it's dangerous to be a gangster. Or you can shoot, and murder is suicide. Oh yeah, if you take one, we'll keep the light on for you. Yeah. Oh yes, murder is suicide. And yeah. so living in this world is dangerous. See then that you walk circumspectively. Yes. Not as a fool, but as wise. People try to drink that foolish drink. People smoking that foolish smoke. Amen. People want to brag about how they can get stupid. But getting stupid is not going to help you in the things of God or in life. Amen. It says don't be a fool. Amen. On purpose. I can't, I've seen so many people being foolish on purpose. Drinking until they pass out on purpose. Smoking knowing that you're going to lose your mind. There's nothing good about heroin going to cause you to be crazy. You're going to be more cuckoo than for Cocoa Pops. Yeah. That stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, don't be a fool, but be wise. Right. Redeeming the time. Yeah. Making the best use of your time. Right. Amen. Because the days are evil. Yeah. We're in living in some evil days where you can't even go to the grocery store without somebody hearing about somebody getting shot. But you have to be careful. Redeem the time. Use every opportunity to do right. right. Use every opportunity to do good. Use every opportunity to be smart. Use every opportunity to be safe. Use every opportunity to grow, to prosper, to self-improve. She's telling you. Yeah. It says, wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is not automatic, but you've got to understand it. The will of the Lord is not just going to happen. Of course, there's a blessing. Amen. When you do when you're doing God's will, but God's will is not automatically just, just, just you just don't automatically know how to do God's will. That's right. And begin to understand it. You got to grow in it. You're gonna to have to seek out, amen, to hear from God. Yeah. Amen. What God wants to do in your life. Says so be not drunk with wine. That's right. Drunkenness is causing you to lose. There's somebody that's getting drunk every day. You may be hearing this message, but you need to stop because you're destroying your life. Drunkenness will destroy you. I know some people who drank their marriage away, drank their home away, drank their, their lifestyle, their job, everything, yeah. and their health is gone away because of alcohol. Yeah. And not just alcohol, but all types of recreational drugs. That's right. Amen. He says, don't be drunk in wine and excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. We're yeah. talking about the, the third person in the Godhead. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, talking about being filled with God's anointing and filled with God's uh, purpose and being led by the Spirit, being strengthened by the Spirit, being protected by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Go yeah. back and listen to the message I preach on the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. That's right. And this is how you get the leading of God. This is how you get the will of God. First yeah. thing, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. You might say, preacher, I can't thank God for all things, but it says here, give thanks for all things. Hallelujah. Because if you learn how to give thanks for all things, you realize that God is involved in everything. Yeah. You, might, you might be faced with a terrible situation. You might be faced with a terrible funeral. But you can thank God for the people that came. You can thank God for having enough food to bless the people that have come. You can thank God for the wonderful mentions and testimonies. Yeah. You can thank God, amen, how that you still held it together. Thank God that he gave you peace when you're about to fall apart. Oh, yes, you got to be able to thank God in all things. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We see here um, that Christ is calling us to find out his will. In the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 9 through 10. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. He's telling us that at the beginning of prayer, he's teaching us how to pray. Yeah. And at the very beginning, he's That's telling right. us to ask for his will. That's right. He's telling us to receive an assignment. Yeah. Can you imagine going to the king in the palace yeah. as the prince, and you go before the, the king, and the king gives you an assignment? whatever region or whatever place God has you to be. That's where just like going to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for your assignment at the beginning of the prayer. 
You get your assignment and you stay in your lane. Hallelujah. Let's keep on going. Yeah. Amen. We see here that Christ prayed the same, same type of prayer. In, the, in Matthew 26, verse 38 to 39, this is right before Christ went to the cross. Verse 38 says, Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrow, even unto death. Tarry ye therefore and watch with me. He And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will be done. So even though his soul was sorrowful, even though it was a difficult thing, he understood that he had to pray, not my will, You're but right. thy will be done. Yeah. We see here that it's going to come a time in your life where you got to pray, oh Lord, I want to do this. My flesh want to do this. Everything in me wants to do it, but not my will, but thy will be done. Yeah. Amen. And God will see you through. You might want to smoke it. You might want to hit somebody. You might want to do something you know that is wrong. Oh, but everything in you wants to do it. But we see here an example that just because you want to do it, that didn't make it right. That's right. That's right. It says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's keep on going in the book of um, Micah, the sixth chapter. Verse 7 and 8. He says, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the first fruit of my body for my sins and my soul? The answer is no. They wrote this for you so that you can understand, even though they didn't say no. The answer is no. Verse 8 says, He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. He has shown you what to do. There's some things, amen, that, that we already know as a believer that we ought to do. But he says here that if you start to operate justly, yeah. don't be unjust. Amen. And then you got to love mercy. Mercy is not punishing everybody for everything they do wrong. Amen. Because God will be merciful to you. We ought to be people of mercy. And then walk humbly with our God. Yes. Amen. Walk humbly with our God. Tell me for God in a humble way. That means submit yourself yes. unto God. Humbly and resist the devil and he'll flee. Right. But as you walk humbly with your God, we see that God will bless you in many, yes. many ways. Hallelujah. That's right. But that's how you get into the will of God. Yes. He told you what to do. There's some things that we already know that we walk in the things of God. Justly, mercy, and walk humbly with your God. First Thessalonians 5, I'm almost finished. Verse 18 says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. We need to learn to be thankful people and not be ungrateful. Some people are driving better than they ever drove in their life. Living better than you ever lived in your life. Eating and, and, and doing things better and still unthankful. And then we'll look back and remember what you didn't have. Yes. And God has blessed us so much, but some people are still unthankful. That's all right. But thankfulness will get you in the will of God real easy. Yeah. Amen. I'm in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 9. And this is my last verse. It says, yeah. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. Yeah. Again, God's major will is that you come into repentance. That's right. God's amen. will for you, amen, that you receive Christ your Lord and Savior, amen, for the forgiveness of your sins, his blood, amen, died for the sins of your world, you accept that that's God's will for you, amen. You have to grow and learn, and you will do some things wrong. But you better get to the place and realize that he's been long-suffering. If you're hearing this message, God has been patient with you, amen. But his will is that you come to Jesus. His will is that you repent, that all should come into repentance. Repentance means to change your mind. Change your mind about a lifestyle without Christ. Change your mind about a lifestyle without serving God and serving with all your heart. I mean, that's God's main will. And if you do that, other things, other things, pastor, preaching, musicians, uh, 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 business people, all yes. other things will come to part. Yes. But first, you got to give yourself to Christ. Christ is not willing that any should perish. That's right. He's telling you right now, it's plain and simple words, 
You don't have to take what the devil has to offer. God is for you, not against you. I'm right to be free. And that's the gospel truth. Hallelujah.